Hello everyone, and welcome to tonight's edition of Kufi University. My name is Jessica Marzuko, and I direct the Kufi and Campus Program. And I'm Josh Ahrens, I direct Kufi's Israel Collective Program, and I also happen to be married to Jessica. So in our house on any given day, we have so many conversations about Israel, about how to reach young people with the truth of Israel, and so we wanted to share a little of that conversation with you today. So excited for this. Uh, what we do with Kufi in general, we're 8 million members strong. 8 million Americans have signed on to say, I as an American Christian support Israel. Mm -hmm. Because while we support Israel in a promise-based fashion, God's promises to Abraham is the foundation of our support for Israel. Israel is an American issue. Both sides of the aisle, the unity that we have between Israel and the U.S. with shared Judeo-Christian values, the democracies that we hold dear, mm -hmm. the the foundation of our governments that we, we move forward with. Israel's an American issue. So with Kufi on campus, we educate not only about the biblical reasons to support Israel, but also the political reasons and why we need to support our greatest ally in the Middle East. So really excited for tonight's Kufi University. We're going to be talking it a little bit about what millennials and Gen Z face when they support Israel. For those of you who, you know, don't know the textbook definition of a millennial and a Gen Z, a millennial is someone who was born after 1984. And a Gen Z is someone born between 1997 and the year 2000. These are folks who came of age online. They live online. They express their voice, they speak out, they are, they have their Instagrams, they maybe have a YouTube account. These folks are so familiar with what it looks like to speak out online. So that is why this generation is so important. They are so vocal in what they believe in. That's why the work that we do in educating them when they're already speaking out on issues, to let them know how to formulate the truth about Israel to their peers, to their campuses, to their churches and their vlogs. Yeah, and what you're saying is so important to understand is that mm. this generation lives in such a complicated world and everything is public. Every word they say is public. Every stance they take is public. So if you're going to do that, you have to be so on your game and you have to have all your facts straight, especially on an issue like Israel where it's so many misperceptions um, are, are floating around and there are so many emotions connected with it. You really have to know your stuff to say something because um, you will have to defend where you're coming from. And the other thing that you said that was, I think is really important to remember is that support for Israel is values based. I think it's so important to understand that we have all different kinds of Christian denominations, all different kinds of theologies, traditions, um, ways that we interpret certain verses in the Bible, um, different sides of the aisle we may identify with. It's a big tent. Everybody, no matter which denomination or whatever label you identify with, support for Israel is still something that is important to you and it's, it's a place that you belong because it's a values-based issue. So good. One of the things I love about um, Kufi and Kufi campus when we have our conferences with students, we'll have Greek Orthodox students mm -hmm. rooming with Baptists and Pentecostals rooming with um, you know, charismatics. Yeah, it's like some people call Israel uniting Christians. It's yes. a really, it's a really beautiful thing. And it's I remember, powerful. Yeah, and, and I first got involved with Kufi as a student um, a few years ago now. Uh, and as a young Christian, it really strengthened my faith. It really connected me with a lot of other young it's Christians. True. And we were all gathered around this one yeah. unifying issue, seeing seeing a problem of of misportrayal of Israel in the media and on campus, people believing it, and just as a Christian saying, I cannot be silent while this is happening to Israel and to our Jewish neighbors. And that really did a lot to to activate my Christian faith and to really build me into a leader and an outspoken Christian who had, um, I, I had to take my faith seriously because I really had something important that I had to do. And uh, I had to be on my game. And Kufai on campus back in the day really helped me hone those skills and be able to do that. And, That's so good. You know. Yeah, I tell our partners, I tell our members all of the time, I tell our parents, Kufi on campus is the safest place for your young mm -hmm. people. We are helping them 
strengthen their voice to speak out for what they believe in. And when we give them the facts and the confidence to speak out for Israel, they're a powerhouse on these campuses. And the future of the United States of America is, is it's hopeful because these young men and women are getting bolder and stronger. I know for myself, getting involved with Kufi on campus back in 2010, they really gave me a voice. They gave me confidence. They gave me leadership skills. So if you have young people in your life, if you have grandchildren or children or people at your church and your college and career group who are passionate about speaking out for truth, this issue is so important that they know where they stand and are able to articulate it. Please, please, Send them to kufioncampus.org to apply for the DC Summit Scholarship through our faithful partners and our friends who support a scholarship to a young man and woman on, on a campus across this nation where they're being attacked for their beliefs and for speaking out. The, through our faithful partners, we can bring these students to the DC Summit to hear from policymakers, pastors, potential, potentially some really high up folks who can mm -hmm. really help these students shape their argument to support Israel. Because when it comes to supporting Israel, uh, it's a process. You have to enable them to have the connection with Israel. Promise-based support. We support Israel as Christians because of God's faithfulness to Abraham, his covenant with the Jewish people. Once we help them identify that connection. The next is to lead them to where they feel convicted to do something. You have to do something. You must act. If not you, then who? If not now, mm -hmm. then when? And we really help these students understand that speaking out is not a choice. You have to speak out or else you do not act. If you don't activate truth by speaking out, you are, you're you're on the side of the people who are anti-Israel because you're not doing anything. You're actually helping it, you're helping it be worse. Edmund Burke, he says, all it takes for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. And then after you connect them and you help them find the conviction to speak out, you really have to build their confidence with education. So that's why I encourage you, if you know young people, send them to kufiancampus.org to sign up for a scholarship to the DC Summit. It's for people age 18 to 26 and the dates for the student portion of programming are June 27th to July 1st. For, national, for the national conference, it is June 28th through the 30th. Please come, it will change your life. It changed my life when I came as a student. So for those of you who are just joining, my name is Jessica Marzuko and I direct the Kufine Campus Program. And my name is Josh Ahrens and I direct Kufi's Israel Collective Program. And we're gonna take a couple minutes and we're gonna have a conversation about yeah the lies that millennials and Gen Z are facing when it comes to supporting Israel. And if not the biggest lie that students are facing today is Israel is responsible for the suffering of the Palestinian people. So just for, just for a, um, an intro into this, what happens on our college campuses is if a, if a Christian student steps up and says, I support Israel. Those who hate Israel and the Jewish people try to immediately shut down the conversation by saying, if you identify as pro-Israel, that means you hate Palestinians. Yeah. That, that they try to shut down their voice. Yep. They try mm -hmm. to define what it means to be pro-Israel. And we're gonna delve really deep into this, but it's so important to know that we have to differentiate between the Palestinian leadership and the Palestinian people. Because the Palestinian people are suffering, but it is at the hands of the Palestinian leadership. So we're going to talk a little bit about that and uh, um, help you equip not only yourself in this conversation, but also your young people in your life. And just so you are aware, there's going to be a link in the post with this video that is a spoken word video by Kufi and campus students covering this information we're going to be talking about, mm -hmm. calling out the Palestinian leadership for their abuses of their people. Please, please share this. Please help us set the record straight because this is such a profound, blatant, audacious lie that is believed 
on campuses across this nation. So please help us get the truth out there and share the link attached with this video. Yeah, that's so good. And one of the first things I usually explain to um, the Christian leaders that I bring on trips to Israel uh, through the Israel Collective Program, through KUFI, is that you to support Israel doesn't mean to be anti-Palestinian. And the vice versa of that should also be true, that if you care about the Palestinian people and you support what's best for them and you support their well-being as we do, then that doesn't mean you have to be anti-Israel because like you mentioned, Israel is not to blame for the plight of the Palestinian people and the failure there really is with their leadership and really with the, the press and the international community, the EU, the UN, um, those who refuse to acknowledge who's really causing the suffering of the Palestinian people and instead just use that issue as a way to, to demonize Israel, to unfairly condemn Israel and all of those things. So that's one of the first things I will tell anybody that asks me, why do you support Israel? Why do we even care? Um, is that I support Israel and I also support the well-being of the Palestinians and the two go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Something I like to mention is that Israel has been the greatest peacekeeping force in the Middle East. Not the UN, not anyone else, Israel. If Israel didn't secure the West Bank where the majority of the Palestinian population live, ISIS or another type of organization would fill that vacuum very quickly. Mm -hmm. And um, it's really the Israel Defense Forces that have ensured that that area is secure and safe for the Palestinian people who live there. And it's the, the leadership of the Palestinian people um, who are responsible for, um, in particular, in, incitement of young Palestinians, really blaming Israel for all of their problems, putting it into the textbooks which are funded by the UN and other um, international sources, um, blaming Israel for, for mm -hmm. the problems in radicalizing young people, mm -hmm. encouraging them to attack Jews, attack Israelis, and so on. This is the issue that really needs to be brought to the forefront, and you're not going to hear about it much on campuses unless you talk to a Kufai mm -hmm. on campus student who is equipped with that kind of knowledge mm -hmm. to share the truth. So as supporters of Israel, we're also supporters of uh, the Palestinian people and their well-being. Yes, and calling out their, their leadership for the abuses mm -hmm. that they're perpetrating against men and women and children, innocent people. Like Josh was saying, with the incitement of children, just for an example, there's a there's children's programming um, under the Palestinian Authority that's kind of the counterpart to Sesame Street here in the U.S. And they have a very beloved character in kind of like a Mickey Mouse-esque costume and this character is continuously telling these children that it is an honor to be a martyr and kill the, the the evil Zionists and to die for jihad and what is so nefarious about this is that in this children's programming they have someone dress up like an Israeli soldier on children's programming and kill this beloved character mm -hmm brainwashing these children and and traumatizing them and seeing their beloved that would be like someone killing mickey mouse on a cartoon and you grow up believing that and they call them the he was killed by the killer of children by the israeli entity this is so this is there's no words to express the child abuse that's going on here they're ruining these children's future and their lives so on campus, when we educate about the abuses of the Palestinian leadership of the Palestinian people, it 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 robs the other side of their of their the power of their lies. If you look at things like BDS, boycott, divestment, and sanction, it's completely based on the premise that Israel is to blame for the suffering of the Palestinian people. If you look at the incitement of children by the Palestinian leadership, if you look at the stealing of international aid by the Palestinian leadership and instead of building hospitals and schools mm -hmm. and playgrounds, they're building terror tunnels, they're building rocket launchers, they're, they're, they're infusing this money in ways to keep the conflict going. They don't care about their people. So when we bring this up on campus and the other side's entire narrative is based on the lie that Israel is responsible for the Palestinian suffering. We really rob them of the, the power of their lie. So the education that 
is so necessary for people to be able to articulate this through KUFI on campus, through KUFI National, through the video and the link that we ask that you share to set the record straight on who is to blame for Palestinian suffering. It's so important. If we even look at, Josh, pay to slay, mm -hmm. the pay to slay yeah. program where Palestinian people are given a stipend th to their families if they die as a martyr, as a suicide bomber, in a knifing intifada, if they're killed trying to kill innocent Israeli citizens. They are paid by the Palestinian leadership. Their families are paid after their death. This is horrific, and this is something that Kufi was the first to start fighting, was mm -hmm. the pay to slay after, in the Taylor Force Act. Mm -hmm. When a, an yep. American student from Vanderbilt University in Tennessee was stabbed to death in Tel Aviv, and the family of that terrorist received aid for the killing of an American citizen in the pay to slay. Kufi was the first one, the first preservative organization to speak out and come against the pay to slay. So yeah. when you get involved with Kufi, whether that's through Kufi on campus, Kufi National, attending the DC summit, hosting an event at your church and so on, this is the kind of impact you're making. You're saving lives by becoming involved with what Kufi is doing. Mm -hmm. I think uh, when I first joined Kufi, I think we had 700,000 members. Now we have over 8 million. It's really um, exhilarating to be part of something mm -hmm. so much bigger than us and, and something that is is making such a profound impact um, on the world, mm -hmm. saving lives and really bringing truth and justice to the forefront. And mm -hmm. At a time when um, our Israeli friends and our Jewish friends really need it. Attacks on, yeah. on Jewish people on campus and elsewhere are higher than ever right now. And so they are more in need of friends than ever. Mm -hmm. And it, it really is something special to have these 8 million Christians come together and say, we love you, we support you, we're gonna stand with you, we're gonna stand alongside you no matter what. And that comes from our Christian faith and our That's Christian great. values and really makes, makes a big difference. It's powerful, mm -hmm. it's powerful. We have 8 million members in Kufi. There's currently roughly 8 million citizens of Israel. Do you know what that means? That mm -hmm. means there's one person for every person in Israel saying, I've got your back. I'm not going anywhere. We're not going to let this happen again. The, the power of the voice of Kufi cannot be understated. We, if you're not familiar with the, the shameful history of the church's persecution of the Jewish people, read up on it. Kufi has literature under our resources on our website. Find out what was done to the Jewish people by the church. And the right. fact that Kufi can now stand up and say, not on my watch. Mm -hmm. We say all the time in Kufi, what if Kufi would have existed back in the 30s? Yep. Something like the Holocaust could not have happened. And when you look at what's happening on college campuses today, I've been in divestment hearings, which is where those who hate Israel and the Jewish people try to make a statement through the student government, asking the student government to divest from any holdings the, the college may have in companies that are involved with Israel. And they're trying to shift the narrative, they're trying to, sh to shift culture and get the students on campus to hate Israel by making the outrage of their emotions and their what's going on evidence for Israel as the bad guy. So when our when our students are on these campuses and they're speaking out for Israel, you wouldn't believe some of the things that they're up against, not only from their fellow students, but from faculty and the administration. Mm -hmm. We have a student who is being called before the Justice Board for wanting to start a Kufi on campus chapter. Can you think of a more mockery of the word justice then calling a student who wants to speak out in support of Israel and the Jewish people, calling her before a justice board to give a defense of why she's not a hate group. See, this is how bold these lies are mm -hmm. about Israel being the oppressor of the Palestinian people when it is the Palestinian leadership who is oppressing the Palestinian people. We have a student giving a defense of why she wants to bring unity and peace through her actions. and. You know, we, I just heard, I was just in DC this week. So we travel, vehicles are our office. Um, I was just in DC this week and I heard that a student, a Christian student at Berkeley 
was physically assaulted for speaking out on behalf of Israel. And that people who hate Israel and the Jewish people were tweeting his location to have people go and harass him and who knows what. This is what's going on on our college campuses. But I am so encouraged by the young people in our program mm -hmm. who are out there, they're bold, they are excited to speak out. They, are, they fully understand not on our watch. This is not going to happen again. We're not going to let the Jewish people face this hate alone. One yeah, the college campus really is the primary battlefield for what our culture is gonna look like in the next generation. And what we often tell Christian students is, yes, when you're on campus, get good grades, do your work, all of that, but also you're there for so much more. You are really there to be salt and light and to tell the truth and to be the defender of that. And so the Kufi on Campus program uh, really equips students in a way that I've, I've never seen any other campus program do with innovative, beautiful, um, love-filled materials and information and leadership skills to go on campus and be salt and light and to be the positive group, to be the group that's bringing healing and reconciliation and clarity to the issues. It's It really is a, a sight to behold to see these hundreds of Kufi students all in the same room together in, in DC, um, cheering for Israel, um, equipped to tell the truth, asking great questions. They really are the hope for the future. And the Kufi on Campus program just does a, an absolutely tremendous job of, of preparing them and supporting them. Students go back to their campus and they know mm -hmm. that a Kufi on Campus staffer is behind them all the way. And really the entire Kufi in its entirety is behind them all the way and cheering them on and supporting them. And it's, it's, it's an amazing thing to see. It's so important. It's, it's, it's not insignificant what we're asking them to do on mm -hmm. campus. A lot of students feel that their anti-Israel professors will punish them academically in grades for sharing their pro-Israel oh, yeah. beliefs. That happened to me, but I should send that professor a thank you note because <laughs> it really motivated me to, to do even more and to tell the truth and to share it with my friends. And then I got involved with Kufi on campus mm -hmm. and then I met her, we got <laughs> married. It was great. I mean, really, students, come come to the, get involved in the program because you, ne you never know who you might meet. You might meet a wonderful man or woman of God and uh, it changes your life. So it, there's there's so much exciting things going on with Kufi and Kufi on campus. Please be at this Kufi DC Summit. 2020 is a watershed year. It is so important that you make your voice heard in DC. With our student programming, we bring them in a full day before and we go over the biblical reasons to support Israel, the political reasons to support Israel. We train them on how to bring this information back to their campus, back to their community, back to their churches. Mm -hmm. We embolden them, we pray with them, we, we give them the campaigns and the messaging and the initiatives. It's, it's a powerful time of equipping. I know when, when I first heard about Kufi on campus back in 2010, I had a zeal for Israel and the Jewish people that God placed in my heart, but I had no knowledge. I had no knowledge, I had no tools, I had no, no language. I didn't have a, the language to support Israel. But when I got involved with Kufi on campus, they equipped me and I went back to my school and I started Kufi on campus chapter that is still going to this day at the amazing Regent University. And mm -hmm. we do this with our students and they are, they're leaving a legacy we have a chapter at Hawaii Pacific University that passed anti-divestment legislation. What does that mean? They passed legislation through the student government that says divestment can never be passed at this school. That means a, a Jewish student who goes to HPU in 10 years will never feel the hate, the I don't belong, and the fear of walking across that campus during a divestment, seat, a divestment hearing that is so hateful, so divisive, and makes the Jewish students and the Christian students feel as if they do not belong and do not have a voice. This is leaving a legacy, and this is what we're doing with Kufi on campus. And Josh can attest to the fact that millennials and Gen Z, they are really up against a cultural battle where moral, uh, moral relativism is taking over moral clarity. And the voice that we give them through Kufi and through the Israel Collective and through Kufi on campus, 
and the voice that we're giving Christians across the nation through The Watchmen, which is on Fox Business Channel, hosted by Eric Stackelbeck, what Kufi is doing to equip this nation of Christians to support Israel is profound. So I, I, if, you're, if you're watching this and you're wondering, what can I do? What can I do? What, if you're experienced with Kufi, maybe you have a PhD. Maybe you're like my parents who went immediately from high school into the workforce to build a, a, a better life for their family. Maybe that's your connection to college. Maybe you don't have one at all. What you can do is support a student to come to the Kufi DC Summit and help change the narrative on our college campuses and shift culture. We ask you for your help, we ask you for your prayers, and we ask you for your voice. If you're not a member of Kufi, log on to the Kufi website and yeah. join and sign the Israel Pledge. Yeah, kufi.org. Kufi.org. You can get connected with everything there. You can sign the Israel Pledge, you can get all the information on the DC Summit coming up and mm -hmm. everything else Kufi is doing. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Uh, short films and tons of educational resources as well. Just a real a wealth yes. of, of information and ways to become involved and we'd love to see you do so. So many ways to become involved. Mm -hmm. We have we have Kufi Coffee Break. If you sign up for the Kufi Coffee Break into your inbox you will get a short lesson with a link to learn more on something really imperative and important and timely that you need to know about the issue and about Israel. Mm -hmm. You can continually educate yourself and come to the DC Summit when our representatives they receive a letter from a constituent saying you know i voted you in please represent my views vote this way they say one person showing up in dc is worth i think 300 letters from a constituent it is powerful it's very powerful when you make your voice heard in these appointments that kufi makes yeah. all across dc and we have we have groups of people from Florida, Hawaii, Texas, showing up and talking to their representatives and saying, this is why it is important that you continue to support a strong U.S.-Israel relationship. And this mm -hmm. is what, this is why Kufi exists. So our voices are stronger together. Yeah. And most of the people talking to their representatives are students that are trained by Jessica and her team. And mm -hmm. it's just, when, when somebody comes in to their office and, and talks about this issue that already makes a big enough impression but when it's a student and when it's a young person mm -hmm. that's going to be voting for a long time and be having influence for a long time it really really makes an impact mm -hmm. and i remember um back in the day when i was just a student from oregon i, I used to be terrified to speak in public or or speak to I, I couldn't even have imagined being here and yet by getting involved with Kufi, here I was, and they gave me the tools and made me into the kind of leader that could walk in there and I knew how to shake their hand, I knew how to get their information, to follow up with them, to send you a thank you note, to really make an impression. And I remember the, the year I came back, the the staffers for the senators and representatives, they remembered me. They mm. remembered me by name. Wow. And it made an impression on them. And that's what happens and that's the kind of impact we're making. So. It's incredible. And then it, when our students show up, when our community members show up, if you walk in that door, they know you represent an entire congregation. Mm -hmm. They know you represent an entire voting district. Mm -hmm. Your voice in DC is powerful. Please join us for the Kufi DC Summit 2020. Meet the students. We will be joining for sessions, for education. Meet the students, ask them where they go. Ask them what they're experiencing on campus. Encourage them. Nothing is more encouraging to our students than to know our members support them. Mm -hmm. Actually, I have a lot of students watching this video. If you would comment in the video section of comments and say, we support you. We're here for you, Kufi and campus students. When our students read these comments, they'll be so encouraged. So give a shout out to where you're at. Our students from Florida will see you're from Florida. It's so encouraging mm -hmm. when they know that the generations that have gone before them in this work see them, acknowledge them, and are encouraging them. So give a, give a shout out to the Kufi and campus students in these comments. It would mean the world to our students. And thank you for your support. Thank you if you've ever given to Kufi and campus financially. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You are changing the future of this nation. Thank you for all that you do. I can firsthand tell you the shift I'm seeing in the Christian generation that are Gen Z 
and millennials who are now all graduating, but it is, it's equipping these young men and women to speak out for their values and for what they care about. So thank you if you've ever given financially to Coupi on campus. We could not do it without you. Absolutely, thank you so much. It is such an honor to for both of us to to work for Coupi and see yeah. where your support goes behind the scenes and the kind of impact that it makes. Um, it's just absolutely profound. So we're so, so grateful and so honored to, to stand alongside you in this great holy mission that we have. So amazing.